today we are going to start with the introduction or the background study of the chapter or the topic then we are going to start the topic of economic decision making there are several methods and there are also several things in which you need to have the economic decision making then we are going to understand time value for money and if the time permits we are starting to we are going to start cash flow diet so we'll try that we cover up four topics but at least we are going to cover three today all right so now let us begin with the introduction to the chapter so in construction economics affects the decision making in many ways from the purchase of material or the scrapping of equipment or the bonus or penalty clause and so on so economics is always associated with the construction we have just not we have seen that way because we, uh, apart from that economics were already there in the construction with the growing maintenance cost especially in the infrastructural projects it has been observed that apart from initial cost of the project the life cycle period life cycle period of a project is is considered is considered when you are deciding something when you are evaluating the alternatives see students when you are doing a project or when you are deciding in terms of resource or when you are deciding in terms of uh, you know equipment there are number of alternatives so initially initially only initial cost was a parameter but now with the growing economy and the maintenance cost the life cycle period of a project has equal importance hence it is important for us to have a certain knowledge about construction economics such as method technologies and terminologies all right so that is why we need to learn the construction economics now let us start with our first topic that is economic decision making so in a construction project an engineer has to decide or to fix an alternative under a certain competitive alternatives in a various situation like comparison of design elimination over project or design economy in size economy in location and other various reasons are stated over here so there are number of situations where we need to decide something compared to another so that is what come that economic decision making these are referred as problems of present economy these are referred as problems of present economy and to solve it there are number of methods let us see that so there are three methods out of pocket commitment payback period average annual rate of return there are three methods of economic decision making that is uh, out of pocket commitment payback period and average annual rate of return all right so now now let us begin with out of pocket commitment so students out of pocket commitment method is based on total expenses occur when you select a particular alternative out of pocket what is going out from my pocket so that means what amount of expense happens what amount of expense happens to perform a particular alternative all right now let us take an example that you are a contractor and and you got pardon you are a material vendor and you got a project for supplying 1 lakh railway sleepers per year you got a project from railway that you need to provide 1 lakh railway sleeper per year right now now you have two alternatives either you can prepare the prepare the sleepers by steel and either you can prepare the sleepers by wooden so when you prepare the sleepers by steel so cost of preparing one form work is 4 lakh rupees labor charges per set is 10 rupees and the life of that is one year while in the wooden while in the wooden cost of preparing the form work for one set is 50000 labor charges per set is 9 rupees but economic life the life period of that sleeper is only one month so every month you need to 
resupply. But if you made from steel, uh, if you made from steel, then it will be work for one year. So these are the case, right? Now, now we are deciding. We need to decide that either to go by steel, either to go by wooden. So we need to evaluate the total expenses by each alternative. Let us begin our calculation. So if there are one leg sleeper, so one what for one one set of form work, one mold of sleeper by steel will cost me around four lakhs plus plus ten rupees per sleeper labor charges. So there are one lakh. So one lakh into ten, and the life is one year, and we have to supply for one year. So there is no calculation for that. So four lakh. Plus ten lakh, so that is fourteen lakhs. All right, that is fourteen lakhs. Now wooden for wooden fifty thousand, but that fifty thousand of form work for only one month. So we need to do it for twelve times because we are supplying yearly. So fifty thousand into twelve, so six lakhs plus one lakh into nine, so nine lakhs. So that is nine plus six, fifteen lakhs. All right. So now, from option one, for option one, fourteen lakh is the answer, and for option two, fifty fifteen lakh is the answer. So total expense is more in wood and less in steel. So that is my, that is how I can decide that I should go for steel because the total expense out of pocket is less for steel, right? Now let us move forward with payback period method. So the payback period. For an investment made, may be taken as the number of years to repay the original invested amount. That in how much time the original invested value is getting returned to us. That is your payback period. That what you have paid earlier, in how much time you are recovering it. That is based on time. That in what amount of time that. Amount is getting recovered. All right. This method is very simple for evaluating uh, for evaluating projects and investment. Also, this method does not consider the cash flow occurring after the payback period, and it is widely used in the practice. So you can have the idea that shorter the payback period, higher the likability that I will go for that option. Because what we have learned by the by the logic that in what time we are getting return what we have invested, so that is that should be the shortest time. That if I invested five lakhs rupees, if I am getting return in in one alternative, I am getting return in two years, and in second alternative, I am getting return in five years. So what alternative I should I should select that what has lesser time? All right. Now let us see an example for that. So let us take an example. That being a contractor, we are need to select an JCB or excavator for brand A and brand B. In both the alternatives, we need to invest five lakhs rupees. Now, if we select the brand A equipment, we get one lakh return in first two years and one point five lakhs return in second two year and third and fourth year. While if we go for brand B, then Each year, up to four years, we get the return of one point five lakhs. So now, based on this data, we need to determine which brand of excavator or JCB we need to select. So now, payback. So we need to calculate at what time we are recovering my five lakhs. So if we go for if we go for brand A at the end of first year, one lakh. At the end of second year. Again, one lakh, so total two lakhs. Then at the end of year three, at the end of year three, one point five lakhs. So previous was two lakhs and one point five, so three point five. And again for year four, one point five, so that is five lakhs. So at the end of fourth year, I will recover my five lakhs. Invested amount was five lakhs. Now, now for option B, at the end of first year. I will get one one point five at the end of second again one point five so total three and at the end of fourth year uh, at the end of third year pardon me so again one point five so four point five 
and at the end of fourth year, 4.5 plus 1.56. So there will be uh, there will be uh, somewhere between three third year and fourth year. To be to be accurate, it will be 3.3 years. So in option B, I'll get the amount in 3.3 years. While on option A, I'll get the amount in four years. So the payback period of option B is less. So that is preferable that I go for option number B. So that is how you select in payback. Now, moving forward, now, moving forward with annual average rate of return, AARR, annual average rate of return. So, in this method, alternatives are compared with the average annual values or to be particular rate compared to the converted into the percentage with respect to the original cost. So that is average annual rate of return. Now, again, to understand the phenomenon of average annual rate of return, let us take a previous example of payback period method, that alternate A and alternate B. Now, if we talk about average annual rate of return of A, so for four years, it was 1 lakh, second year 1 lakh, third year 1.5, fourth year 1.5. So 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1.5, 1.5 divided by 4, so that is 1,30,000, 1,30,000. Now against of original cost, how much percentage? So average annual rate of return, 1,30,000 divided by 5 lakhs. So that will be 26 percentage. Now for alternate B. So for alternate B, 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 divided by 4. So that is 1.5. So average annual rate of return equals to 1.5 lakhs. Divided by 5 lakhs into 100, so to convert that and to convert in percentage, so that will be 30%. So, whose annual, average annual rate of return is high? For option B, the average annual rate of return is high compared to A. So, we can select the, we can select option B. So, that is how we select in, that is how we select in average annual rate of return. So, I hope we are clear about economic decision making there are three methods out of pocket payback period and average annual rate of return out of pocket total expenses occurred by you payback period what amount you have invested is in what time getting recovered and average annual that is against of the total cost what is the average return you get express that into percentage all right now let us see another concept that is time value for money. So time value for money is a simple concept which represents the variation in the value of sum of money over the period of time. Well, time value. With respect to time, what is the value of a sum of a money? One rupee today may not be the same one rupee tomorrow. That, that is what that is what we are trying to convey by time value for money. The most important principle involved here is interest, which can be looked upon with the use of cost of using capital. One rupee of today will be more than one rupee of tomorrow if there is an interest on that. And the basic example of this is your electricity bill or your telephone bills. That if if you fail to pay your electricity bill on a particular day, now you need to pay the something extra as penalty. So that is, that is your time value for money. So for example, if 1000 rupees is invested for the 5 years at the end, at, at the rate of 10%, what will be the amount at each, at the end of each year? Let us see that. So, so here is the table for every year the value showing the value that initially it was 1000 rupees, so no change. Now next year on that 1000 rupees, 10% of uh, interest, so 100 rupees. So now value will be 1100. Now on 1100, again 10%, so 110. So now value will be 1210. Now again that of 1210, 10% of interest, so 121 rupees. Uh, 121 rupees so that will be 1331 rupees 
So that is how we need to calculate up to 5 years. So this table is trying to represent that what is the value of today's 1000 rupees at the end of first year, at the end of second year and so on. So that is that is the formula F equals to P into 1 plus I raised to N. F is the future value, P is the present value which you have invested, I is the rate of interest and N is number of years. Alright, now, now let us calculate the reverse scenario. What if I need 1000 rupees at the end of, now what if I need 1000 rupees at the end of fifth year. So what amount should I invest currently? So in the previous case, P was known and F was unknown. Here, the F is known and P is unknown. Alright, so formula will be reversed that P equals to F upon 1 plus I raised to N. So if you try to calculate nearly 620 rupees you need to invest today in order to get 1000 rupees in, in next 5 years. So I hope we are clear about the concept of time value of money. Now, now before I conclude the session, let us talk about cash flow. So cash flow is movement of money in and out of the company. That what goes in and what goes out from in terms of money, that is your cash flow. Cash flow can be of two types, cash inflow and cash outflow. So these are the things which we are going to learn in the context of cash flow in the next session. So this is it. That was all about in today's session. In the next session, what we are going to learn, that is cash flow diagram, what are the factors affecting cash flow diagram, evaluating the alternatives by equivalence and few of the numericals. So in case of any query or doubt, you can always contact me on my mail or my number. Thank you.